Regardless of what communities many of us engage in online for knowledge, growth and benefit, I observe many men often, to overuse Matrix metaphors, simply putting on their heroic Neo masks and pretending in our YouTube Matrix to jump buildings, do virtual kung fu and dodge bullets, while never believing in any of it being applicable in their day-to-day -day lives. You know, it's interesting. While I know that it's cathartic and often necessary right after the red pill to release the pressure valve on one's war stories of what your ex did, for example, as in, finally I can talk to someone about the injustice, that same thirst-quenching elixir can slowly toxify into poison after a while of repetition, if that's the only thing you drink, it becomes like alcohol, and you, an alcoholic. What's interesting to me is, when I observe that same man still stuck in that alcoholic place years later, telling drunken enraged war stories with no other insight other than bashing their past ex-girlfriends and wives, by the route of bashing women as a whole. I notice there is no understanding of themselves, and certainly no understanding of women in relation to themselves. And I don't mean giving women a pass for their behaviour. No, not at all. I mean understanding nature and the world, and living self-determined from that position. And sometimes I have to finally resign myself to the belief that these men who are fixated on their past and little else are probably better off just finding another woman to plug back into, as I see these men as cipher characters, not built for the autonomy required for an unplugged life. Because, let's face it, most of us are simply far too strongly hardwired into our biology, and couple that with no real intellectual or philosophical will, or interest in the self at all, the average male thus has no business sailing off into that independent and uncharted sea, especially when he's easily prone to seasickness. The red pill is no fun for most people, but unfortunately today the cruel joke is it is often still better than the alternative out there. This is the hard crossroads for many men, and this is not a condemning of men in general. I fully acknowledge that life would be simpler for me if I was more reproductively hardwired. I could just fall into those historically, soft stack of biological pillows. I realise I've always been the perverse one, the oddity. I know it. But it feels more like home to me here unplugged than living in today's gynocentric matrix. I'm not sure that's the case for everyone, though. You see, the point of red pill ideas, to me anyway, is self-actualization, And not as the young Neo in the Matrix first surmised, as others often online still do, that the reward for unplugging will be an adrenalized video game of outrunning agents, jumping buildings and dodging bullets. No. No, gentlemen. With regard to running and fear and dodging bullets and feeling so goddamn scared and inadequate all the time in your life... Well, Morpheus answered it well, when Neo asked him whether he could dodge bullets someday. He answered, when you're ready, you won't have to. This is one of the most revelatory moments in the movie, yet most people fail to grasp its gravity. That is, you won't have to be tough or fast when you realise the truth of things. We're reminded again in the Oracle's waiting room when the bald kid says, there is no spoon. The message is clear. It's about confronting your illusions and fears. Yet, most people still think the point to having real strength is being superficially prettier, faster and stronger. No. Gentlemen, I found that your fears aren't defeated with artificial shows of strength, but rather by realising how ridiculous your fears have always been, and willfully practicing the small victories of letting them go. The realization to me of the red pill is that the virtual game and rules of the Matrix are no longer as compelling and attractive as clean and simple reality are. Sex, 
doesn't sell much to me anymore. The childish bells and whistles aren't enjoyable anymore. Empty, over-sugared treats aren't satisfying anymore. Big tits and sex are seen for what they are. In simple terms, one unexcitedly sees the hook now and cares little for the laughable bait. That is, after the red pill becomes a staple diet, the slickness of everything doesn't sell to you as much as authenticity does. The two initial stages that I see adrenalize most men who take the red pill are an anger and embarrassment of their past life and an excitement of their present freedom. The, the most common is the man who's angry and embarrassed of his past life. This is being perpetually stuck in the anger and nothing else of your past story. You're stuck on this old narrative. This is the guy forever only able to talk about the injustices of his past life. This is the reporter telling you, the bitch did this, she said this, then I said that, then this happened, etc, etc. A simple recounting of painful journalism. This mode is a guy fixated on Mr. Anderson as their mentor and hero, and not Neo, without even realising it. Effectively, it's guys on the internet who want Mr. Anderson to keep talking about his days being late for work, his shitty job, his shitty boss, not sleeping, the depression. Can you imagine just watching that initial setup of The Matrix as an entire movie? Well, that's what many guys fetishize. It's like Neo is trying to say to them, okay guys, now let me load the junk program for you. And these men are saying, no, no, back up. Tell us again about your shitty boss who tried to fire you, Mr. Anderson. These men want to stay locked in the doorway of the red pill, neither here or there, neither blind nor aware. It's the trained and domesticated bird with its cage door open, refusing to leave. These men are simply satisfied with stories of how Mr. Anderson kept fucking up. This, gentlemen, is your ego in control because it still wants to identify with your Mr. Anderson past, rather than you realizing that Mr. Anderson needs to die so that you can finally be reborn. I would suggest that for self-actualization, you need to be more interested in Neo than Mr. Anderson. That is, Mr. Anderson must die. The man painfully still stuck in his past narrative with his ego in control is a dopamine addict. He's addicted to the anticipation of being free, to being the caterpillar and not the butterfly. It's the same as the guy who stops himself from coming because he wants the potential of coming to last forever. It's a torturous existence living in this space, in my opinion. Then there's the other freshly red-pilled kind of guy. The one who's excited at their present freedom. It's the excitement of actually passing through the door for the first time. Freedom. The jump programs, kung fu, flying, fighting, and cool outfits. This is the healthier next step. You know, I'll admit, it's much healthier than being stuck in the Mr. Anderson phase I just mentioned. But then, guess what? You're told that all this liberating and exciting fun is a lie too. The rusted Nebuchadnezzar, with simple people wearing torn clothing and eating sloppy porridge, is what life is really about, and that you should want this. This is the hard sell to most men. Parenthetically, and look, I might be wrong, but it's an observation of mine nonetheless, I've noticed a drop in traffic on my site since I showed my face. It could be YouTube, who knows. But it could be that people don't like the more human human, the one with a face. The one with less of the matrix in front of me. Shedding the mystery. I think, is the real person too much of an affront to some red pillars? Could the matrix human, more faceless, be more comfortable to those still struggling with the idea that there is no spoon? And what does it say of people who prefer the more hidden and anonymous me to a more human one with a face? Or maybe it's just as simple as 
people think I've now placed the target on my back showing my face and don't want to stand too close to me now should they be shot. I'm not sure. And I'm not boo-hooing any of this by any means, don't get me wrong. It's actually one of the benefits of showing my face. Much of the unruly mob has unsubscribed and disappeared, which I feel a lot lighter about. Anyway, it was just something I was thinking about in relation to this matrix analogy I'm speaking about and how reality seems uncomfortable to some. Take it with a grain of salt. You know, often I think... Is our inability to create peace in our lives due to, amongst other things, entertainment, books and movies, selling us conflict as normalized reality? That is, we're told life's boring without conflict. Many men desire entitled and bitchy women where the conflict is guaranteed. Many women date bad boys. We put up with the drama of unfair bosses and bad jobs. Do we avoid peace because we're constantly sold the normality of drama and conflict as a human experience? I mean, it's obvious when we look at advertising. Sound and fury sells much better than stillness, doesn't it? And what does one do with stillness when alone? With the old ways no longer mentored or taught, I do wonder sometimes. Movie-wise, think about it. There's no Shawshank Redemption Part 2 where we see how Andy and Red live peacefully afterwards, we are not shown how a free man lives after his struggle, which could be a challenge in itself, okay, but no, we're not shown freedom because there's no conflict in that movie, and most movies are formalised on that principle. There is also no Matrix follow-up movies where we see life after the system is destroyed, because there's no struggle, there's no good and evil. No wonder it's hard to self-actualise for many men, compared to historical times, because that story that comes afterward, the reward of peace and stillness, has been intentionally ignored. Our reward is often, we're told, just more struggle. And one final word about taking the red pill and unplugging that I'd like you to realise. Even though you may have unplugged, it's usually not enough to do it once. Listen, gentlemen, unplugging is a continual process. It's a continual unplugging. The Matrix is always trying to plug back into you. Natural urges, along with the world that wants to exploit those urges, is continually trying to plug into you and update your operating system. The Matrix is like a toxic gravity. It's your ex-girlfriend calling you up wanting to just catch up for a coffee. The Matrix is continually trying to re-plug back into you to exploit you. It's not a matter of unplugging once and your Yoda. That's a fantasy. And this is where many men feel like they were conned, when the initial thrill of unplugging wears off. Unplugging is repetitive fitness, gentlemen. A constant will to health. Keep swinging in that direction that makes you come alive. And do your own thing, gentlemen. Later. If you appreciate my content and want to say thanks, please feel free to donate via the links below. I really appreciate it. A massive thank you to recent generous donations from Andrew, Adam, Julian, Blaze, Jorma, and especially Jeffrey. You guys are great. And finally, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified of my next video. If you're not being notified, check that my channel's icon in your subscription is set to notify you always. Thank you.